All right, what's going on guys? Try back again here to bring you another video. This one's going to be doing another Walking Dead video leading up to the mid-season finale for The Walking Dead Season 9. In this one, we're first going to give our thoughts, go over the theories about how some of our survivors got those X scars. And spoiler warning, as per usual, if you guys are not cut out for The Walking Dead, which is up to The Walking Dead Season 9, Episode 7. So one last episode for this half season for The Walking Dead Season 9. Then we're into our mid-season break. And of course, The Walking Dead will probably return uh, early February type of uh, time frame next year. Um, so a bit of a uh, break coming up after this episode. But uh, this is one that was, uh, I want to say, most discussed after uh, episode uh, 7 because we saw this in both episodes 6 and 7. Just to remind, episode 5 was the final episode for Rick. And then we have kind of this new direction with a really new beginning uh, with uh, a Michonne. There's a lot of characters in both episodes, but sort of a Michonne-centered episode, I want to say, in uh, episode 6. And then kind of more of a maybe... Uh, Daryl centered episode in uh, in episode seven. If I had to pick, you know, kind of one standout for the theme of each episode, uh, both uh, we got to see uh, them in their backs. We have not got to see uh, Carol's yet, I believe, after episode five or a lot of the other kind of. Uh, core uh, central survivors, even though there aren't that many you know, left compared to how many there were a couple years ago. Um, but basically, Daryl and Michonne both have on their backs either a branded X or a cut-in, scarred-up X. Um, so this one was deliberately shown in both episodes with Michonne's in episode 6 and Daryl's in episode 7 when they were both putting on their uh, you know their shirts uh, in, in each respective episode. Uh, they show them from behind. Daryl actually has two. He has one uh, near the top of his back, uh, a little bit uh, right to center, and then he's got one at the bottom left. And Michonne... Um, has one at the uh, the bottom left as well, in basically close to the same spot that uh, that Daryl has his. So it, almost like they're in sync, or they're they've been put in almost the same uh, location. So this one is is very interesting. Of course, as we're getting things started here, uh, just questions right now. Really, not that much in the way of answers, but you know, a couple different possibilities with this one, and some questions that came through. Darth Straw said, "Who branded?" our survivors and then Anna Hunt said uh, Trev uh, who else do you think has the X scar and what do you think it means uh, have they been branded by an opposing group and uh, so that's that's one possibility right is that uh, and they kind of uh, maybe alluded to it a little bit or kind of mentioned it is that uh, something must have happened during the time skip with Michonne allowing people into uh, Alexandria and then possibly them um, turning on them uh, now, so far as we know, they haven't killed anybody, so far as we know, um, you know, the people that kind of came in there. But we do see both her and Daryl with these scars in their backs, and, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit strange to see. Uh, Colin here said, uh, the X scars look like they're right where the rebar stuck through Rick. And uh, that is, that's, yeah, that's a really good point. I, and I really like that one, which is that if you compare the bottom left location uh, for Michonne and Daryl, it's, it's, it's pretty close, I want to say, to where Rick got um, rebarred. I mean, I'd have to look back to the clips of Rick when he's lying on the rebar. It's brutal at the end of episode four, start to, uh, to episode five. Uh, but, you know, the X, X marks the spot. The Xs are pretty close to where that happened to Rick. So there's a couple of possibilities here with how they got them. Uh, they could be sort of like a branding. They could be from some other uh, opposing uh, group or something or, or uh, someone who joined and then kind of turned on them. But it's also possible that they're self-inflicted and that they mark themselves on purpose uh, in that spot to pay their respects to Rick or something, um, to, uh, to mark themselves as some of the original survivors of the series or so some of the original you know, original survivors. Like you're, you're talking Michonne, you're talking Daryl, probably Carol too, but we haven't seen yet from Carol. So watch for that maybe in the mid-season finale or maybe next half season, next year, uh, if she has one as well too. And then any other 
core survivors. So like Maggie, if she ever comes back, maybe Tara, because Tara's season four too. So she's pretty OG as well. And then some of the others is questionable. I've always thought of Aaron as sort of a Alexandrian, uh, but you know, he could in some ways qualify as kind of an old school survivor at this point, because we are into season nine and season five was, you know, quite a while ago. Same with uh, Gabriel. So let me know what you guys think about both of these theories. The one possibility that someone did it to them, um, you know, a la similar type of style as maybe Negan, who, you know, lines everyone up and bashes someone's head or something. Somehow somebody captures them, lines them up and, and brands them near a fire or something and then lets them go after something. Um, tricky to say for sure. But I, but I do like the call out here from Colin, which was a few days ago when he mentioned this, which is that um, those... Those X's at the bottom left, like I said, Daryl has a couple, but the one at the bottom left is very close to where uh, Rick was struck, or Rick's side went through the rebar. So uh, maybe that's this is a way for them to sort of uh, represent or mark themselves as uh, as for what happened, so they don't forget, or just to represent themselves as part of that original core group with Rick, and not to forget uh, Rick and uh, the things that happened. Um, you know, in his life and also leading up to his uh, his death. So let me know what you guys think. Do you think it's to pay respects to Rick or do you think it's been done uh, involuntarily, so done to them, or do you think they did it, you know, um, uh, for Rick voluntarily on their own? So, uh, and keep an eye out for uh, any other kind of old school survivors uh, possibly getting dressed you know, so that we can take a look at their back left, right? So it's what it is. Uh, leave those comments. I want to see what you guys have to say. Leslie a Hardman says, uh, okay, I'm a huge fan of Opie from Sons of Anarchy. I have watched him so much. And I believe that the walker uh, at uh, the gate... Uh, is definitely Beta. Uh, that's the way Opie stands. He's very huge and opposing. I'm thinking it might be him. So that's cool. Um, now, me personally, I don't have. I, I haven't seen Sons of Anarchy through. I've obviously heard of it many times. It's one of the series that people used to request that I watch through and review with you guys. And uh, it's never something I've been opposed to. Of course, when Breaking Bad was ending, uh, it was a series that a lot of people were, you know, were talking about when it was getting close to its end of its run. And it's just one that I never had time to go back and, you know, watch through all the way. I tried it. I watched like the first episode or two, and I just uh, I couldn't go. A lot of episodes, right? So a lot of <laughs> seasons and stuff. Can't commit to it but that's cool to hear because um you know I, and i do take that uh, seriously because you know when you watch a series for a long time you get kind of the sense of someone's gait you know we can usually pick up even if they're wearing costumes we could probably pick up who's who in terms of like if you compared uh, daryl if you if you took norman Reedus and andrew lincoln and negan, <laughs> negan and the others you know michelle and the others we can kind of tell from their stance their stature kind of the way even if they're wearing uh, a zombie suit or something we could probably pick out who's who right so that's pretty cool to see and, you know and that just happens after you watch you know a certain series even if especially if you've seen it a few times over or something uh you know I, I can do that with walking dead characters as well too pretty well sometimes i'm wrong but you know that's cool to hear and i do hope we see beta in this uh, mid-season finale man because uh, that would be that would be really cool and really set us up well to come back next year and get people excited to come back next year um Epic Zombie Killer says, Hey, Trav, I guess we have our A 2.0. I'm talking about the X's. So first it was the X's. It's the A's and B's. All right, first it was the A's, A's and B's, and now it's X's, right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's true, but I like the rebar idea. I feel I feel comfortable saying, like, I think, it's re I think it's where the rebar struck them and that they've done this to themselves to represent themselves as old school uh, survivors. This also isn't the first time Daryl has sort of self-inflicted something like that. After Beth's death, didn't he put a cigarette out on his hand? Uh, I think he did, uh, if you remember that, just because he felt so guilty for it. And guilt, uh, guilt can cause masochism. That's where masochism usually comes from. It's usually the superego punishing the id. Um, so self-inflicted masochism, uh, the parts of the mind in terms of psychoanalytic theory, superego punching the id, uh, with strapping it with guilt for whatever had happened prior, right? So, and then the, the pain, the inducing of the pain to the id relieves the guilt, right? So this is why some people will seek out punishment after they do something really wrong. Turn themselves in, confess, you know, that kind of thing to what they did. You know, go serve a prison sentence if they broke the law and they, you know, did something and, and turn themselves in later. So, yeah, that's the reason why. Um, 
Human beings are interesting because we have kind of the new brain and the old brain and the way they kind of go together. Anyway, so moving on. Um, yeah, so, you know, so I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with saying that it's just, it's probably where the rebar struck and that's probably, and they probably did it to themselves out of guilt for, uh, having lost Rick and what happened with Rick. Cause, uh, Daryl, especially Daryl and Maggie, man, they've got to be really feeling responsible because, you know, they, they had a huge part in putting Rick in that situation and what happened after. Uh, Antonio Diaz says, The Walking Dead is so good right now. And, and I agree, man. It's so sad that we only have one episode left. But I'm so happy the way this season turned out. I think it turned out a lot better than... I was really worried around mid-summertime. After we had heard that Andrew Lincoln was leaving, I think we all assumed they were going to kill him. And, and when, they, when we heard that, it was like, damn, dude, what's that going to do to the show? You know, fans are going to hate this. Like, if they just kill him off... Um, you know, and maybe in just kind of like haphazard fashion, like let's say he gets Noah eaten by zombies or something, a Noah type death, you know, people would be so mad. So I was pretty worried, but now I'm really feeling happy, just feeling like, okay, they made a lot of changes. The TV series is not the same as the comic at all. It's totally different now. The characters, the leading cast is completely different. There's no Andrea, there's no Rick, there's no Carl. And I mean, those are like the leading three characters from the comics, probably, you know, over, especially during like this type of time frame. Those are like, the standout characters and they're all dead in the tv series so it's it's not the same at all in terms of you know which which cast of characters is at the forefront so but i'm really happy with the way it's turned out i think it's still turned out really good and uh, you know it's definitely something that uh, that i look forward to and i'm looking forward to the back half of the season as well to get to see the whispers because that's exciting again man to get to see a great new set of villains so i agree it is really good right now um Adam Whittington said, uh, that dog uh, Daryl has is perfect, right? So it, it's perfect to fit with Daryl, right? Because Daryl is the dog, right? So it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, Rick's attack dog is sick, sick as uh, attack dog on him. So that's cool, right? And uh, yeah, man, it's it's perfect. You got to go with a wolf or a dog. I'm good with a dog. A wolf would have been even cooler, maybe, but I don't know how you would how you would control it and how you would you know do it properly. You probably you know wolves are I think wolves are more more even more difficult to control than dogs. Dogs are one thing, but if you had a live wolf and you were trying to get it to get it to do what you needed to do in terms of filming and stuff, scenes and that, it'd be probably even more difficult. Uh, Jordan uh, Macklin says, uh, Trev, uh, how has no one answered the uh, disappearance of Anne or maybe come to realize? that she could have taken Rick. Um, I think if anybody, Gabriel should have come forward with that information, right? So I would point to Gabriel on that one. I think that's on Gabriel. He was the only one who knew what she was doing, who got that information of what she was doing, and Daryl never found a body. But this could be like a, um, well, I don't want to make the comparison, but when there's an explosive near, like there's an explosion nearby, right? So it could be one of these where maybe... Because there was the explosion, everyone just thinks that Rick was blown to bits or something. Like, everyone thinks, well, there's a huge explosion, and there was no body found, but, um, you know, it's because it was exploded into a million pieces or whatever. So they all think Rick really is dead, and he's like in, you know, they found his colt, and, and the rest of him's just gone because it just exploded, right? But uh, you have Daryl and some of the others that were there that were, you know, close enough by to where they could probably figure it out. But if Gabriel's not willing to tell them, and then they didn't see Anne, and they didn't see the helicopter... One way or another, they just were not able to figure it out, and they either think that Rick is just... Daryl thinks Rick is gone somewhere else, you know, just off. Other people might think that he died in the explosion and his body is just not even there, right? So, because uh, there certainly were lots of uh, walkers that were probably, you know, in a million pieces at that point. But uh, I'm with Daryl on this one. I like that he has never found a body, and he never gave up looking, only that he could not uh, find him. Um, so yeah, there was just no way for him to do so. So uh, I hope eventually, you know, they'll bring him back or they'll do something or they'll go to the movies or I don't know. Let's see how this whole thing works out. But I'm just glad the way they've done it so far and whatever ha they have to come up with, I think it's, uh, it's good. So, but you're right. They haven't been able to figure out, uh, the possibility that he could have been taken in a helicopter. They must not have seen it at all. Uh, Michonne's mom said, uh, hey, Trev, uh, it took Frank Darabont six months to write and shoot the whole first season of The Walking Dead and AMC, and each episode takes one week to shoot. So why would it take uh, Gimple, Kirkman, and Kang so long to do a movie? Well, maybe you're right. If it's a, just a TV movie and it's no big deal, they can probably do it faster than that. And some people have said they think shooting will begin, filming will begin in 2019. I hope that's true, and I hope, I hope that's the way it goes, and I hope they can get it airing in 2019 or 2020. Uh, just that uh, if he's going to take like a year off, right? Because if because that's what they said, right? You guys remember, think about this. They they said that he wanted to be with his family more. So 
Uh, if he's going to take some time off, this was a half year. He didn't even get a full year off this year. He got he worked a half year, then he basically went uh, went home. It sounds like so. Uh, I, I would think he would take a whole year off in 2019. But if he doesn't, then I'm even more happy and great. Good for that. Because then we're looking at 2019 or 2020. That would push up the release date, and I would love that. Um, but I'm just thinking more like 2020, 2021, just because of how, how long it takes to organize everything, how long it takes to do everything. But you're right. If you consider it like two or three episodes of the original Walking Dead, and that's all the first movie is, and it's like a TV movie, and it's not that big of a deal then fine. I guess it depends how big they want to go with it. If it's a full feature film and it's something that, you know, is of the same quality as you would go to the theaters to see and you have kind of, because you can say movie and you can think of it as different, you can think of it as different ways. You know, if you're talking like something where you'd go to the theaters and actually pay, you know, 20 bucks or whatever it is, running rate 10 or 15 or whatever it is nowadays uh, to see it, then for that, I would think that would take more, like maybe two years or something to film and they'd be doing some bigger stuff and, uh, you know, bigger scale and that kind of thing. So it depends if it's just like a made-for-TV movie or like a theatrical movie. And, um, you know, from what, you know, again, conflicting, we're not really sure, but it sounds like maybe a made-for-TV, made-for-AMC type movie. So we'll have to see what that uh, turns out like and what that looks like. Either way, I'm not going to complain because I'm just going to be happy they didn't kill him off. <laughs> you know what I mean, like, we should just be happy. We should just be like, even if it takes a couple years, how, how long it takes him, let's just be happy he's not just dead. Because that's probably the the usual, like, route you would take if someone wants to leave, like Dale. You just kill him and then you move on, right, without him. So I'm glad that they didn't do that. And let's all just be happy that they didn't do that, I think. Uh, BD King 1997 with the last one says, Trev, I'm usually uh, not very critical of The Walking Dead, but I got to be honest, tonight's episode, uh, season nine, episode seven, was a snooze fest. Most boring episode in a long time. Well, I hear what you're saying, you know, in this episode, episode seven, there wasn't like, um, you know, that much in the way of like action or big time excitement or things like that. But you got to remember, not every episode can be like that. It was a good episode for Daryl, and it was directed by Marco Cudlitz, uh, who's, you know, of course, so this is his first episode he's directing. Um, so I get it. You know, I, I hear that if you're saying that. But, you know, it depends on what they give him to do, how much is, is going to be covered in the episode. And, again, it's not a mid-season uh, finale. Uh, Michael uh, Satrazemis is directing the uh, mid-season finale coming up. So uh, very excited for that because he's fantastic. He even did some episodes for Fear this year, uh, for Fear Season 4, which I think turned out pretty good. You know, a lot of people don't like it, but I thought it was pretty good. Um, but, yeah, you know, I hear what you're saying. Like, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't that crazy for Episode 7, but it's like... Yeah, but it's it's a lead into the midseason finale, and we're probably going to see some really good stuff this weekend too. And uh, I enjoyed the episode, even though I hear what you're saying, and it wasn't that crazy. The first five episodes were insane of this season, and um, you know we're dealing with a lot of a lot of change right now in the series. But I like that they explain some of the things about Daryl continuing to look. And we're still getting to know Magna and the others. We're still getting to figure things out. And uh, the Whispers are building. They're building up to it. So it's another builder to the Whispers. And then we get to see probably a pretty good payoff in the midseason finale with the Whispers finally arriving, right? So that's going to be really cool. Let me know what you guys think um, you know, about uh, the X's and everything else. Leave your comments below, the movie release. If you like this video, please thumb it up below. Uh, thank you all for subscribing. I want to thank you guys so much uh, for subscribing. The channel finally got some more subscribers, so thank you guys for that. I appreciate that because it's been like a year, dude. It's been a struggle. Okay, It's been a struggle this year. So thank you guys so much for subscribing. Anyone who hasn't yet, I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't mind. Uh, you know, uh, Join the Whispers. Subscribe at the bottom so for this video, guys. See you again soon for another. As always, this is Trev. And I'm saying peace. Later, guys. See you soon.